Hello and welcome back to the Arcane Forge and to day 26 of the Drawtober Challenge. My name is Josh and for those of you who don't know, the Drawtober Challenge is a daily illustration challenge where I try and draw every single day throughout the month of October using the on-screen randomly generated prompt words as inspiration for what I should be doing each day. Now today's prompt was Hammer which gives you an absolute ton of things that you could be drawing. And it was a very exciting one for me. So I'm gonna cut out all the rest of the waffle that I usually put at the beginning of these videos as an introduction. And I think we should just get started. So for today's illustration, I drew two characters with hammers. You can very easily draw, you know, just a hammer that you would hammer a nail into a wall with. You know, this is a fantasy game as well, so you could draw a war hammer, or you could draw, you know, a mole, or any variation of bludgeoning weapon that seems like it would work quite well here. A hammer mimic, or whatever. But I went for an absolutely massive, horizon obliterating giant with a very, very large crystalline or stone hammer and a tiny little knight who is trying to confront them also with a very, 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 very small hammer. Now, I immediately thought of one of my patrons here uh, when it comes to drawing giants. This was sort of the main inspiration for today's video topic. I've mentioned Yorick a few times in my other videos. Yorick is somewhat giant obsessed perhaps even more obsessed with giants than I am with elves or vampires or aberrations or any of the other creatures that I have, you know, an absolute love of. And I only found this out relatively recently, I guess. It's because Yorick is in fact a giant. I saw a few photos of him attending a convention, uh, meeting cosplayers and things like that. And I thought he must be in costume because surely no one is that tall in real life. But Yorick is actually a real life Goliath and as such has somewhat influenced his fondness for giants. So usually in my sort of uh, Patreon only Discord server, you know, we, when we have, you know, Yorick's at the kind of Patreon level where we have one on one chats once a month and a few other places, we, we have a few conversations going. Um, he will recommend, as part of my Monster Mondays list, some type of giant, usually a type of giant that A, isn't in the Monster Manual, which I enjoy because a lot of the time these are giants that I would never normally just, uh, you know, explore, but also giants that I have never in my life heard of. Um, Yorick has played a lot of role-playing games and has found giants from things like Pathfinder and from various mythologies. He's created a lot of his own giants, including a very, very unsettling moon giant with lidless eyes that sleeps upside down and can fly like Superman. And that is just a terrifying image in general. But yeah, when I saw the prompt hammer uh, in one of my uh, previous sort of illustrations for an Inktober, I drew a dwarf with a huge, huge sword. And I kind of thought, you know, maybe I should do a dwarf with a massive hammer. But then, you know what? I thought, Yorick loves a giant. I haven't drawn a giant in a very, very long time. And I thought, you know what? This is for you, Yorick. You can, you can have a huge, huge giant. And in fact, if there is a place that you are comfortable with me sending this to you, Yorick, uh, feel free to message me an address that you would be comfortable with me posting the original piece of this to. You're definitely going to be getting a copy of the digital illustration of this as one of my patrons. But if you would like to have the original, I will happily send that to you um, as a very early Christmas gift or something like that, because this was your drawing from start to finish, in my opinion. But enough gushing about uh, my supporters and friends. Uh, I think it is time to talk a little bit, while well, I still have some time, uh, to talk about the illustration itself. So I really like in fantasy illustrations where you have a supernatural set of scale. Um, one of my favorite artists of all time. Um, need to make sure I get the name right, actually. I feel like I'm going to butcher his name, is Jean Girard. Girard? G-I-R-A-U-D. You'll know who I'm talking about when I talk about Mobius. He's a French illustrator who does these absolutely fantastic sort of minimal shading, really high quality detailed line work illustrations. Lots of very vibrant, interesting colors. I like to use some of these color palettes in my own work who does sort of surreal fantasy landscapes and characters, both in sci-fi and otherwise. 
And always there is a, or at least for the most part, there is a supernatural set of scale. And what I mean is that there are usually tiny little people who exist and live and you can kind of feel the reality of their lives in these absolutely cataclysmically enormous situations. There are huge faces sculpted into the sides of buildings, deserts with massive crystals in the middle of them. And there's always just a tiny little person somewhere within there or multiple people existing and living. And I think that is something that I'd like to try and describe in my D&D campaigns. And it's something that I really like to have feature in fantasy in general, because they're the kind of structures that you wouldn't normally be able to create in the real world. You know, maybe they wouldn't be stable physically, or maybe they're just impractical. But there's something that says this is a fantasy world when you can enter a set of doors that are wider and taller than a skyscraper in a medieval fantasy setting. And I really love that. I think that is something that we should aspire to create in our D&D campaigns, in our fantasy worlds, and so on. So I really wanted to have this giant be something that is so massive that any kind of competition, any kind of conflict with a normal scaled human, which you can see on the left hand side here, is inconsequential. Almost something Lovecraftian and eldritch about the impossibility of trying to tackle a conflict with something so massive. The kind of ant boot style uh, analysis that, you know, this giant might go about its day without any kind of aggression towards humans whatsoever, but it's so massive that its existence cannot help but be destructive to something so small by scale of comparison. It may not even notice that humans are a threat or could even pose a threat, that kind of thing. To this end, I also wanted to slightly dehumanize this creature. I like the kind of... Um, blending of human and inhuman elements that you can get with fantasy creatures and with fantasy adversaries. And so I constructed a very particular kind of helmet with the kind of, you know, Batman uh, nose covering type thing. I really like that kind of metallic um, nose covered helmet idea and shape in general. Um, but I decided to give this creature eight eyes on its helmet or eight eye holes. And two of these I did, you know, actually, you know, sketch the face underneath. So at least two of these are, you know, holes that this creature could see out of. However, very intentionally obscures all the facial features uh, to make this thing look like an adversary, something that is unrelatable, something that you cannot project human emotions and things onto. You don't know what it's thinking, what its tactics or plans are, and it makes it an extra, extra level of unsettling. I mean, it's unsettling because it has a hammer that's the size of, you know, a village uh, that it's about to smash this small, small poor um, knight with. But um, you may have seen or read or played some sort of uh, media connected to the Silent Hill universe and will be therefore somewhat familiar at least with the character Pyramid Head. And there's a similar sort of um, impression that was designed for that character, something that makes that character so unsettling and so scary, um, aside from the fact that it has a massive meat cleaver that it drags along walls and, you know, can tear people in half and so on. That's not the thing that makes you scared of Pyramid Head when you first encounter Pyramid Head. Um, it's this alienness, this unawareness, this inability to project human emotions onto an adversary. Pyramid Head doesn't speak to you. Pyramid Head doesn't have intentions that you can fathom aside from your death, you assume. And that's the same sort of thing that is accomplished with any kind of mask or helmet that completely eradicates human emotions. You know, if we cannot anthropomorphize or project our thoughts or feelings onto an adversary, we can't relate to them at all, we can't predict what they're going to do, and that's more scary than the big hammer that this guy is going to smash this human with. I intentionally wanted to leave it a little bit vague. The hammer's kind of over this giant's shoulder and they're reaching out to the knight who very clearly is wagging a finger and uh, raising their hammer to strike. Whereas the giant, I didn't want to have mid-swing. Um, he doesn't look like he's putting a lot of effort into this because I wanted it to be intentionally vague whether or not the giant is trying to help or crush or, you know, just probe, like figure out what this human is, maybe. I wanted to make it, you know, up to your interpretation what the relationship between these two characters might be. But certainly the imbalance of scale and therefore power in these two characters means that this knight is potentially in a lot of danger. 
I really like the kind of implications of giants. You can see this this giant has massive, two enormous kind of ox-like horns on either side of this helmet. Has a huge fur around its shoulders that drapes all the way down its back. Has a huge cape that billows behind it. It has a kind of sporran-like. Uh, fur as well around its waist and groin and all these bandages which are you know kind of you know leather strips perhaps that bandage around its legs the one visible leg that you can see there around its wrists supporting its armor and so on and so the implication is that there are creatures that this thing has skinned for all of this fur it looks to be in one solid piece there are creatures that it has perhaps slain in order to affix these horns to its helmet and sort of gives an impression that somewhere out in this universe this fantasy world that your characters are living in there are threats that are imposing to this creature that it has to slay massive creatures that it can skin and wear the clothes and armor and fur and so on of how out of your depth is your character who on a universe that operates on the scale of this giant that you are so insignificant and yet to it there are other creatures that it can face but anyway that's kind of what giants mean to me and kind of implies that there is a world worth exploring and worth being nervous of a grand epic adventure and a universe that you are poorly equipped for but anyway i can hear myrtle snoring away really loudly in the background Hopefully you can't, but it's a good indicator that I should wrap up my video today because I've been rambling quite a lot, and if I've put Myrtle to sleep, then that means I probably have you as well. So, <laughs> I'll let you get back to your day. I hope you had a fantastic time with the prompt hammer. I hope you have good adventures with any giants that you might put in your campaign. And I wanted to thank Yorick as well for being a really fantastic supporter of the channel and for helping me to accomplish so much uh, that means so much to me in my life making content for you guys as an illustrator and yeah, just content creator. So yeah, thank you all and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow for day 27, I think it is. I think it's 27. And so I've got my days mixed up of the Draw Tober Challenge and the Prompt Word Pack. So yeah, have a great day, guys. Bye.